Hi guys, what's up? I'm Mary Richardson, Rapid Transformational Therapy Practitioner. I want to make this video all about you and your anxiety. For those of you who don't know me, I help people get past the things that keep them stuck, whether it's self-doubt, healing from that narcissistic relationship, that toxic relationship, or even overcoming the strong anxiety. In this video, we're gonna focus on the strong anxiety. A Couple of things I wanna bring up just straight away. All of the things that we use to describe our anxiety are symptoms. It's different for each person. So one person, you know, assuming that you've all been checked out by a medical practitioner, this does not replace seeing a doctor. Um, some anxiety symptoms can um, be also symptoms of things that could be um, something medically wrong as well. So this doesn't replace seeing your doctor. This is for general information purposes, informational purposes only. What you might be experiencing are uh, physical symptoms of anxiety, uh, where you feel like Maybe you've had an illness, maybe you are afraid of um, the pain associated with that illness and just seeing anything that reminds you of that illness can make you feel anxious. Anxiety comes in different forms for different, for each person. It's different for each person. So yes, there are some common things. We know that untreated general anxiety can ratchet up and become an anxiety attack and then it can also become a panic attack. If you've ever had a panic attack, those are um, pretty scary things. However, there are so many things you can do to overcome that, and especially over time. So with anxiety, the main thing is to think of yourself as having a toolbox like a tackle box for those men who go fishing. But for women, you know, we've seen like we have makeup toolboxes where you open it up, up the lid and there's different layers there um, where you can put different cosmetics and so on. Think of your anxiety as something um, where, where you need a toolbox for your anxiety, just like a toolbox for going fishing or a toolbox for our makeup. Um, what goes in the toolbox are the things that you can pull out to help you through the anxiety symptoms, okay? So if we know with um, anxiety attacks, it, there's chronic worry, um, you can be obsessed with the um, physical symptoms of it where people buy all these medical devices, you know, blood pressure and heart rate, and, and those are all good. And again, this if you have a medical condition, always see a doctor, even if you don't, and you're wondering, this is not a replacement for seeing your doctor. With anxiety, think of what I'm offering you as things that you can put in your toolbox, okay? So one of the first things you can do is differentiate the anxiety you're feeling. Is it a generalized anxiety attack? Is it something stronger like a panic attack that can come out of nowhere, might even wake you up at night? Um, it can be, a panic attack can be expected where, for instance, you have a fear of heights and then you're gonna go rock climbing or something that involves heights. You can almost expect that that might trigger your panic attack. Um, Anxiety though can be something that becomes chronic where it almost feels like you're addicted to your anxiety, where you look for it, you expect it to be there, you expect that you're not gonna be able to go do things that you wanna do, um, family get togethers, and it, you find that it's just, your world is becoming smaller and smaller and smaller. You may not, you might even be in a place where you just don't even wanna leave the house. Um, now with COVID, of course, last year, we all couldn't leave the house. Um, 
I'm talking about where you have an opportunity to get together with friends or do things you really want to do, but your anxiety keeps you stuck. So those are cases, obviously, you would open up your toolbox and pull out different things that you can use to help you through the anxiety. And over time, it's very empowering to realize that you have the ability to control it. Um, of course, there are medications, of course, but I'm talking about things like learning how to do tapping, learning how to stay grounded, learning how to um, do deep breathing exercises, yoga, all of these things, what they do with your anxiety is they force you to take your attention off of the symptoms of anxiety and put it on something else and help you to stay in the present moment. So when everything in you is saying that you need to worry about having a panic attack, when you need to be concerned that a panic attack might strike out of the blue, wake you up at night and scare you, um, when everything in you is worried about the past or the present, doing some of these things from your toolbox can help you feel empowered over your anxiety. And what happens is over time, you realize that you were never powerless over it. You just didn't have a toolbox or enough things in your toolbox to deal with the anxiety. So let's move forward now, um, talking about what happens if you don't deal with your anxiety. Well, what we know what my research has shown me is that when you try to ignore your anxiety, when you try to um, not acknowledge it, try to um, pretend that it, it doesn't have a hold on you, pretend that it's, it, all of these are just ways of sort of not getting you through your anxiety, you're trying to go around it. What you need to do, this is another thing you can put in your toolbox is you can acknowledge the anxiety that I acknowledge the anxiety. I don't own it. So I don't say it's my anxiety. I say the anxiety as in it's not permanent. It's only temporary. Um, so you can acknowledge your anxiety. You can breathe through it. You can um, say positive things as you're tapping. So tapping is a way, something that you might have in your toolbox where you Tap the meridians on your body, so um, on your head, the third eye, or right between the eyebrows, um, right beneath your nose, right above your chin, below your lip, um, on your collarbone, and even on the back of like the side of your body. So tapping is really just about 10 taps, uh, 10 taps here, and then 10 taps in each on each meridian, and that's one cycle and you can do about three of those um, but what I like and what I have found useful is to um, not just say positive affirmations but actually things that will address what I'm feeling like I'm feeling scared but I know this won't last or I'm feeling anxious because there's all these people around but I know that I am in a safe environment and that everybody experiences anxiety from time to time. Something that's truthful for you in the moment. And you don't have to say them out loud, obviously, just think them. But the point is, um, that's something that you can pull out of your toolbox to address the anxiety. With anxiety, it's not usually one size fits all, and it's not usually one thing works every single time. And it's not usually only one thing that works to take care of the anxiety. It's a host of things. It, you have lots of options. Look at it like that. Um, and anxiety can be situational, of course, as well. Um, going for a job interview, anticipating the job hiring process, or anticipating a, creating a business. Um, and you know whatever the anxiety, wherever it, it comes from, whatever situation, you can pull out a different tool from your toolbox. All right, so enough about that, but 
what I want to say most of all, if you get anything from this video, I hope you get this, that try not to escape from your anxiety, but just go through it and use the tools to help you through it. So imagine what happens in the brain for those um, technical people. Um, the brain, the amygdala has the fight, flight, or freeze response. In other words, one is I'm totally safe, 10 is I'm being chased by a bear, right? So the amygdala fires up and says, oh my goodness, there's a bear, he's running after me, I need to run. And it gives you loads of adrenaline. Well, what can happen is if you've had um, unhealed trauma, a really difficult childhood where the parent was a narcissist or lots of trauma and dysfunction as a child, or even as an adult, um, you know, horrendous relationships that um, were toxic, dangerous, narcissistic, whatever it was for you, that fight, flight, or freeze, it's almost like the accelerator on a car, like the gas pedal, where it's constantly pushed down to the floor, right? And that fight, flight, or freeze kind of gets stuck in making you feel like you always have to be on guard. You always have to be ready to run from that bear. And, and that can trigger chronic anxiety because that fight, flight, or freeze experience never has a chance to power down and be at a normal state. Like there, it's always in, like think of it like an inflamed, always, you know, gas pedal down to the floor. So you can imagine why um, it's not uncommon that people that have tr unhealed trauma, the body is still reacting to that and the mind is trying to make sense of it. Because in the moment, your mind is saying, it's the middle of the night. You're in bed. Why am I having a panic attack? This is really scary because your mind gets scared. It doesn't know what to do with it, how to frame it. So if you can, another thing for your toolbox is you can relabel the anxiety as something else. Not trying to escape it, but you can change it from anxiety to excitement and say, okay, I'm really excited about um, whatever it is for you. Think of something you get excited about, watching the hummingbirds like I'm watching out my window, or I'm really excited about when I get home from work, how excited my dogs are to see me, or um, whatever you get excited, excited about. I'm really excited that my kids, I'm gonna get them a new you know, pop-up book or a new toy, or they're gonna go crazy when they see this new toy. In other words, if you can reframe that anxiety and call it something else in the moment, that's just another tool. It may not work every time, but that's another tool that you can employ. So with anxiety, it's best not to try and go around it, just to breathe through it, go through it. The more you fight anxiety, the more it ratchets up. Because what happens is that fight, flight, or freeze says, Oh, you're trying to ignore me? Oh, well, I'm gonna really let you know you need to run from that bear, even though there's no bear. So it tries harder and harder to get your attention physically. So it, it it's, you know, increases, you know, um, all kinds of things to get your attention. So think of the anxiety as trying to get your attention, that it thinks something is very, very wrong, even though it isn't anything. So you have to open up your, your tackle box, your toolbox, and pull out different tools and address it. Um, I hope this helped you. I don't want to ramble on, uh, but I hope I gave you some tips um, that you can start adding things into that toolbox for you when you do experience a, a panic attack, an, an anxiety attack, because most people, most people have a smile on their face, they're dressed well, they're at work, they're kind of faking it till they make it, and what's really going on inside is they're fighting anxiety 24 seven. Maybe they're with family or friends and they just don't wanna dwell on it. They, they know most people don't understand what they're going through. So they put on a smile and they go forward, but inside they feel like 24 seven, it's just they're fighting with themselves over the anxiety, you know, uh, trying to get the anxiety to calm down and they don't know what to do. So if you feel that you're not alone, there's lots of people with that as well. Uh, but I, hopefully you'll get your virtual toolbox and start putting things in there to help you. 
I'm Mary Kay Richardson. I'm a rapid transformational therapy practitioner. I help people get unstuck. I'll see you in the next video.